I'm going to show you some of the treasures of the cathedral which helped to tell our Christian story. One of the first things that you notice are the three windows behind me, made by Sir Edward Burne-Jones, who was baptised in this cathedral, and they tell our Christian story. We're told in our holy book, the Bible, that an angel visited a young woman called Mary and told Mary that she was to have a baby boy, to call him Jesus, and he was to be the Son of God. And the window behind me shows this story. It shows Jesus being born in a cave, a shelter for the animals. The baby Jesus grew up and moved back to Nazareth with his parents. He became a carpenter like his father. But when he was about 30, he knew that he had something very special to do. So he went out into the highways and the byways, and he preached, and he healed people, and he made miracles. Everywhere he went, there were crowds of people just hanging on his every word. The authorities soon realised that this was a force to be reckoned with, and that he was dangerous because what they feared most was that Jesus was going to be the leader of a rebellion. And eventually Jesus was put on trial and he suffered the death of the Roman execution, the crucifixion. The window shows Jesus nailed to a cross, nails through his hands and through his feet. And he hung there until he died. If we then have a look underneath that, and Burn Jones shows us a wonderful picture of a woman who is totally distraught, a woman coloured in orange, whose name is Mary Magdalene. On Easter Sunday, Mary Magdalene went to find Jesus, who had been laid in a tomb. And when she got there, there was no one in the tomb. And then she heard his voice. He told her that he had risen from the dead. But over the next few days, few weeks, Jesus appeared to his disciples and talked to them, had breakfast with them, and then told them that it was time for him to go back to his Father in heaven. The ascension window shows exactly that. So at the base of the window are Jesus' disciples, and Jesus is a central figure at the top. The Christian story is celebrated in our services. The main day for worship is Sunday. Worship at the cathedral is led by people you can identify because they wear a special white collar, like Dean Matt's. These people have given their lives to being leaders in churches and are called clergy. Dean Matt is one of the clergy at the cathedral. We're not to shine with our own light, but with the light of the glory of God, the light of the resurrected Christ. I love my job. I guess if I had to say something, I would say that my favourite bit would be um, helping people to pray and to worship and to know God better. But also, I ha I'd also have to say, working together with other people to make our little corner of the world a better place. And I uh, hope that you will join that and uh, enjoy some fellowship, but also raise some much needed funds for Christian aid. So in the Christian church, uh, leadership is all about serving and helping other people, helping them to deepen their faith and, and to learn uh, about the faith. And so it's very much, we, when we think about uh, the example of Jesus, we think of him as one who led by, by serving, for, serving others and caring for others. And so we model ourselves on his example of that care well, and that service. Sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. What I'd like children to remember about St. Philip's Cathedral is how they felt during their visit particularly if they managed, perhaps at the end of the visit, to have a moment, even a few seconds of, of stillness. I'd love the children to remember how they felt at that moment. 
because there's a peace and a warmth about the building and i'd love them to remember that.